What if I told you that LED lights not only flicker, creating those horrible dark bands in your footage, but they will also ruin your motion blur in ways that cannot be fixed in post? And what if I told you that all these potential problems are mostly invisible to the naked eye on set? I know, very scary. So there I was, shooting an event, being lit by a big, beautiful chandelier and a roll of a dozen LED bulbs. There was not much we could do lighting-wise since the place was pretty packed, so we just went ahead and started rolling. While I'm shooting, the speaker at this event starts moving his hands quickly and I notice something a bit strange in my camera monitor. The motion of his hands look choppy, as if I'm shooting at a narrower shutter angle or faster shutter speed. And of course, I panic immediately and double check my settings, but everything was okay? 24 frames per second, 180 degree shutter angle, and variable frame rate was turned off and nothing was on automatic. Was it the on-camera monitor? I had just gotten this camera, so I wasn't sure, and I chalked it up to my monitor refreshing at just a weird rate or something. So the footage must be fine. Hopefully. I bring the footage into Premiere, and the problem is still there. I'm getting a very strange looking motion blur whenever there's any fast movement on the screen. Did I get a defective camera? I check on my other camera, a GH6, which I've been using for a year, and I'm getting the same issue on its footage. What the hell is going on? Has motion blur always looked like this? As soon as I get home, I start doing some digging. There's a few forum posts and Reddit threads of people describing the same problem I was having, but most of the answers were blaming the operator for having the wrong settings or the camera having a faulty sensor. I knew I wasn't wrong, so this didn't convince me at all. So I kept digging until I found a picture posted by Heath Orchard on the cinematography.com forum. And this is the picture. This was the same visual artifact that was happening to my footage. And you can see it clearly on the LED string lights here. I found out that this artifact is sometimes referred to as segmented motion blur. I don't know if this is common knowledge or not. This artifact is way more common with apartment lights. You know, those little lights to sink on the top of the roof, LED string lights and other non-cinema fixtures. Cinema lights like sky panels or even like any aperture lights do not have this problem and sky panels advertise to be flicker free for anything under 25,000 frames per second. But the whole experience at the recent shoot made me realize that maybe my overall understanding of flicker was incomplete. And I found myself asking, what the hell is flicker? Like actually, what is flicker? Well, it turns out that flicker is a very simple concept. And once you understand it, you'll see why this effect happens with some lights and not others. Flicker is caused by the change of intensity of a light source over time. And every artificial light flickers because our electricity is not constant. It is turning on and off multiple times per second, which is why we call it alternating current or AC. And this is where I want to draw a distinction. There are two ways to get flicker in your image. One is by not being in sync with the current and the other is because the light bulb is changing way too much in brightness during the cycle. First, I wanna talk about not being in sync with the current of your country. Here in North America, it alternates 60 times per second or 60 Hertz, as you've heard for short, going from 120 volts down to zero as one cycle. In most of the world, it's 50 times per second. Here is a map of the world. This is important to know because depending on where you are, artificial lights flicker at a different rate. And this was the flicker that I was taught to learn and worry about when I was learning about cinematography. Your frame rate and your shutter speed or shutter angle must always be in sync with the electricity. This, in very short, means that your frame rate and shutter speed must be a multiple of the electricity in your country. In the case of North America, 60 and 24 are multiples of each other, so it's in sync. And yes, you're reading this chart right. In a 60 Hz country, you cannot shoot over 120 frames per second without causing flicker in your image if you're using non-cinema lights. 100 frames per second in a 50 hertz country. If you wanna shoot at 24 frames per second with 180 degree shutter angle, you can do this in countries with electricity pulses at 60 hertz. In this case, all the countries in red. If you're in a blue country, you've got to use 25 frames per second at 180 degree shutter. But what if you must shoot at 24 frames per second in a blue country? We shot half the movie in Colombia at 24 frames per second, and we're gonna shoot the other half in India. So we have to use 25 frames per second? It won't match in post. No, you only have to change the shutter angle when shooting in India. So you would shoot at 24 frames per second at 172.8 degree shutter angle. The motion blur will be indistinguishable from 180 degrees. As you can see, 
There are some other countries with stripes on them, which means they have both 120 volts and 240 volts, but the light pulses at 60 hertz. Except in Japan, where for some reason they have both 50 and 60 hertz. So, we solved the problem. No, I have some bad news for you. Remember when I said flicker is caused by the change in the intensity of the light source over time? Some lights fluctuate in intensity a lot more than others. And that's what I learned in this lesson. This is where flicker matters the most. Because you can get flicker free footage if your shutter and frame rate match the electricity of the country, but you cannot get flicker free footage if you're using the wrong light bulbs. Incandescent bulbs and LED bulbs both turn on and off 120 times per second. Incandescent bulbs though, fluctuate less than 10% in intensity during their cycle because it takes longer for the filament inside to cool down before it heats up back again. That means from being, when it's at 120 volts, it's pretty hot, then to zero, it's cooling down, but then it goes back to 120, so it goes hot again. Some cheap LED lights can flicker from 100% intensity down to 10 or even 0% intensity in their cycle. And this is the culprit why flicker can destroy your smooth motion blur and turn it into segmented, disgusting motion blur. Not to mention those horrible black bars in your footage, even though you can fix them. The light is turning almost all the way off, leaving the camera with no light to capture in those very, very little brief moments of time. Basically, these LED lights are acting like a strobe light like you'd see in a party, turning on and off very frequently, leaving a series of segments and not a streak like usual. These string lights are fluctuating a lot, and you can see from these ones that I own. These are the ones in my balcony and they fluctuate almost to, from 100 to zero pretty badly. Yet, here's a light bulb in my living room, which is an LED smart bulb that doesn't fluctuate as much. What's even worse, even lights that flicker very little can start to noticeably flicker when you dim them, due to something called power width modulation. The simplest way, and I don't want to go too much into this, but the simplest way I can explain it is that the light is on for less time than it is off, giving more time for the light to dim, therefore introducing flicker to the image. So now that I've cursed you with this knowledge, you will start to see this strobe motion blur in a lot of content that you consume. I'm sorry. I even saw it in several scenes of Squid Game Season 2. It can be nitpicky and a very small detail for the audience, but I believe it is key cinematography knowledge and something you should always keep in mind when shooting with available LED lights that you cannot control. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out to our sun because it is the perfect light that will never flicker.